All right, I'm going to be reacting to Conan Says Farewell. I've been watching Conan since 1993, so this should be pretty good, you know. I mean, what are we going to do without Conan? Come on. Before we wrap things up here, uh, first of all, uh, I am the beneficiary of literally hundreds and hundreds of really talented, amazing people. Uh, and then I'm just the nose cone of the rocket, and there's so many people to thank. Eleven years ago, uh, I made the decision to come to TBS. At the time, people were really surprised that I did that. They didn't think that would be the move. I did it for one reason. A guy named Steve Coonan came to me, and he's one of the loveliest people I've ever met in show business. Uh, he's what the Irish call a mensch. And uh, <laughs> we take words that we like. Uh, <laughs> Anyway, he came to me and he said, uh, I will protect you, I will let you and your people do whatever you want, I'll never interfere, uh, and will support you 100%. They did that. They did that in every single way. They never went back on their word. They were extraordinary yes. and lovely. The people at TBS were nothing short of remarkable. None of this would have happened. I'd have gone away a long time ago if it weren't for them. So Steve Kuhn and I thank you, uh, David Levy, Kevin Riley, Dave Wolkis, Sandra Dewey, uh, Brett Weiss, Jen Cohen, we love you. Uh, thank you all so much for making this happen. We're really good people. I want to thank my squad. They've been with me forever. Rick Rosen, Gavin Pallone, Lee Brookine. They're the best at what they do, and they take really good care of me. Uh, got to bring up uh, the guy who uh, I met back in Andy Richter. I was paired with him to try this crazy thing. No one thought it would work, uh, and he's been my executive producer since then. No, no, that's and not Andy And we Richter. are uh, brothers from uh, different mothers. Our executive producer, our jefe, Jeff Ross. Want to get up to Jeff Ross? Come on, come on, come on, come on. Come on. <laughs> Who's back there trying to get a restaurant reservation? Anyway. <laughs> oh, they're on an outside table. All right. Well, anyway. Uh, uh, you know, Jack Black brought up something really important. Uh, in another era, a sidekick uh, was someone who uh, sat next to the host and laughed along and uh, just sort of supported them. And um, they were great in their way. They all had their special skills. And uh, I, I, when I found Andy Richter, he's one of the funniest people that I ever met, and I put him next to me. And Andy, I never said to Andy, <clears throat> you know, give me room, get, you know, you can't get the laugh, I've got to get the laugh. The rule was always, if you think of the funniest thing, just say it, and that'll get us out. And he did it 100,000 times. He's a brilliant man. And I love him forever, Andy Richter. writers and I did uh, not starting in 1993 and until now I've just I mean uh, I I cannot uh, express how brilliant these people are and uh, I don't often know that writers uh, are appreciated as much as they should be I you know I know that there are awards for them but they're behind the scenes you have no idea the courage of uh, many of my writers the ingenuity uh, just the beauty of their minds how they work and they're also really good people I've been blessed with the best writing in television, in my opinion, for 28 years, so. Really. Uh, two writers. They made me laugh. I got a call out. Uh, uh, I got On a call out in one particular occasion. right now because they're uh, true, just amazing people who Still, still have kept, kept this show going all through the TBS years, and that is Mr. Michael Sweeney, Michael B. Sweeney, if you're here. Uh, Mike Sweeney's here. And, uh, who's amazing, and he's always in the trenches, and he goes with me on all the travel shows, and we have been, we've been having fights all over the world about 
Uh, it's just absolutely absurd, and half the time he's wearing his pajamas uh, and an old beat-up Chatham sweatshirt, because that's all he brought. Uh, and we're, and, and uh, I love him. I just, uh, and I'll tell you, someone else, uh, Mr. Matt O'Brien, who is... I have to Not related. <laughs> He's, uh, he's no relation to me at all. He's just a brilliant writer in his own, uh, in his own right. But uh, I always tell people that uh, he's my uncle's son and we had to hire him. <laughs> That's funny. And so many interns believe think it's it. They true believe it. <laughs> and don't give him uh, the respect he's due. And I, I think it's the funniest thing in the world. <laughs> but Matt is great. There's a guy on our show who never gets any recognition, and you will agree with me. Jordan Schleske? He is the, truest he warrior on him. He is the no, like, at the bottom, Jordan the very Schleske. bowels of the works, the gears. He's been with me, I think he started with me way back in the early 90s mm -hmm. as an intern. And he is the guy who travels the world with me. He's the guy that makes things happen when people try and shut us down and try and stop a shoot. He does some crazy thing that's illegal. Uh, that's illegal. He gets shot in the leg but doesn't say anything about it till later. Uh, he is the truest warrior I've ever met, uh, Jason Chalem. This is probably going to get cut out. through it all. Everyone's a creep that comes out of the dark. Fast move. Please have a seat right there. introducing sexual predators on the show. Here's another creep. Have a seat. Why don't you have a seat right there? Here I am. A brilliant woman who is 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 our line producer and makes everything happen. Uh, if, if she left us tomorrow, I would leave show business because, and, and Jeff would leave. She just makes everything work. She's genius. What is going on? Yes, Sarah Fedorovich. We gotta give it up. Sarah! Where are you, creep? <laughs> She's off. Hey, uh, I gotta give a shout out to somebody. This is very hard for young people to understand, but uh, um, in 1993, when I was chosen to uh, replace David Letterman, people thought it was a batshit, crazy, stupid idea. Uh, they, uh, be, they didn't know me the way you do. I had no experience. I really shouldn't have had the job. One guy changed my life, uh, Lorne Michaels at Saturday Night Live, said uh, he did something. He said, I think that guy, and NBC said, the writer with the weird hair, and he was like, I trust me, he's got something, and Lorne uh, put his credibility uh, on the line. He really did at the time. You can go back and read, and, and people wrote, wow, I remember reading an article that said Lorne Michaels has taken, like, the biggest gamble of his career with this complete unknown for such a big job. Lorne uh, saw something in me. I'd like to think he was right, and uh, he changed my life, and I, I'll owe him forever. He's a great man. So, uh, on a personal note, uh, you owe me five dollars. Quick shout out to Lisa Kudrow, who I met right outside these doors in a little uh, improv actor space. In, uh, in, in, in uh, 1985, and uh, I immediately sized her up as like one of the coolest, most talented people I'd ever meet, and, and a lovely person. When I went through, uh, when I started to go through the possibility that I might get this job, it was, I must repeat, a completely insane idea. Nobody except Lauren thought it could work. Uh, Lisa, Lisa Kudrow had more faith in me than I did, and she said, You've got to do it. You have to do it. You're like the only one that can do it. I thought she was nuts, but I wouldn't be doing this job. You wouldn't know me if it wasn't for Lisa Kudrow. So, big shout out. Uh, now, I'm going to wrap this thing up as fast as I can. Uh, I come from a big family, but uh, i got to give a big shout out to my parents, who I think raised me right. Uh, I love you, Mom and Dad. And uh, they'll see this, I think, three months from now. <laughs> they don't know how the internet works. <laughs> Someone will get them a film of this, but 
I love them dearly, and uh, you know, what are you going to say? They, they, uh, they, they, they are just amazing people. My siblings. Uh, oh, he's going to cry. Uh, Neil, Luke, Kate. He's going to cry. They never ever were impressed with anything. <laughs> they, they just, I mean, would you? <laughs> They, uh, no, they, I'm not saying that in a bad way. They, they just had a, uh, they always treated me the way they did uh, when we were kids, uh, which was shitty. Uh, I'm a fucking celebrity, man. Uh, they're really amazing people. Uh, they've supported me in every way. It's probably not always the easiest thing thing to be related to someone, uh, you know, like, like me, who acts like an ass for a living, but, um, 1997 they've never for a second bought into any of the service potential back. foolishness of this business, and, uh, they give me shit constantly, and, uh, I love you guys all for it. Uh, probably the biggest shout out I, I gotta give, uh, is, um, one of the most amazing things, or I'm gonna say the most amazing the fans. thing to me on this show, uh, over the 28 years, uh, of various shows, of the various nine, uh, was shooting remote, and I, uh, I, I saw this uh, woman on the remote uh, who was an advertising executive, immediately fell in love with her. You can see, you can see me kind of fall in love with her on, on camera. It was the best decision I ever made in my life, including late night, I and mean, she is the best decision. She's my beautiful, super smart, much smarter than me uh, wife, uh, Liza. So thank you. Liza. She's not even in the first row. Come on. He couldn't spring for first row tickets. It's his show. Whatever people think of me and our relationship, they quickly figure out that Liza's the smart one and really funny. And when we shot the scene from uh, the, the Notebook where I kissed Ryan Reynolds, she saw it happen. She was there. She saw it happen. And when it was done, she said, well, that ruined both of you for me. Now I gotta look at this video. I gotta search it and, out. Uh, because of Liza and because she's Coleman so smart, and Ryan such an Reynolds. amazing uh, mom, I have uh, two uh, just two incredible children. I know everyone thinks um, their children are incredible, but I've seen some of your children and they suck. <laughs> Damn. Uh, my children are better. They just are. You know. I've really looked into it. You got some bad children. Uh, uh, Nevin Beckett, I love you. And again, you'll see this in 30 years when you start to understand about my career. Uh, uh, and then I'll just close with this one thought. I have devoted all of my adult life, all of it, uh, to pursuing this uh, strange phantom intersection between smart and stupid. Um, and there's a lot of people that believe the two cannot coexist. They uh, can. But God, I will tell you, uh, it is something that I believe religiously. I think when smart and stupid come together, it's very difficult. But if you can make it happen, I think it's the most beautiful thing in the world. Uh, I am so grateful. To all my staff and the fans in this country and around the world who have joined me in this really crazy and seemingly pointless pursuit uh, to do things that are kind of stupid but have something smart in there somewhere and then there's a little tiny sort of flicker of what is a kind of a magic I think that's what I believe so uh, my advice to anyone uh, watching right now and it's not easy to do it is not easy to do it's not easy to do but try try and do what you love with people you love, and if you can manage that, it's the definition of heaven on earth. I swear to God, it really is. So good night, thank you very much. Uh -oh, he was gonna cry. He was gonna cry. He almost cried. forget to like and subscribe but that takes place down there you can be the fellow degenerate if you're in a room with a horn